Hi chaps and welcome back. So today what I want to talk about really is mimesis versus abstraction. Mimesis is the replication of reality in ours. So for example here we could have a drawing of the bridge behind me, we could have a photograph of this bridge and we could show what it looks like and from that somebody else could draw it. We have a record of the object reality of that thing. But you can also do abstraction. And what you're doing there is leaning towards something that stands for emotions, symbols, and so on, but doing so in a way using colors, shapes, lines that don't necessarily replicate reality. There are two different ways of photographing, abstraction and mimesis. And there's obviously a bit of a blur between the two. So for example, you could photograph the bridge in an obscure way. It's still there, it's still the bridge, but it's slightly abstract. When you photograph, consider this balance between abstraction and mimesis, making sure people understand exactly what it is that you're photographing or using the image itself to tell the story, to create emotion. Those two concepts will, when fully internalized, revolutionize your photography and your way of looking at the world. It first became apparent when photography was invented actually because the painters would suddenly realize that all of the photorealism that they spent so long to master, for example in the Dutch school with Vermeer and so on, was obsoleted in a way by photography that could do so more accurately and more quickly. And therefore, you saw, for example, Picasso's cubism. You saw some of the other abstract, expressionistic art movements that tried to shift art away from mere replication, mere mimesis, to something more complicated. And eventually, with Kandinsky and so on, almost entirely abstract. Consider this in your photography. The majority of people, what they tend to do is photograph things. Whereas what you're really creating is images. You're creating images that inform or that inspire or that move people. And you don't necessarily need to have the objects that we see around us in the world to do that. Look at paintings by Rothko. Look at paintings by um, Vermeer. Compare the two, contrast them. How do they make you feel? Obviously you look at a Rothko and you think, well, any old four-year-old could have done that. And you look at a Vermeer and master. Um, you can marvel at the mastery of a painting like that. But they are two different approaches. Try both in your photography and see which you resonate with. By incorporating both in your toolkit, you will broaden the range of your artistic expression. This is Ben from Holistic Photography. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and like the video. Thanks so much.